So we've got a lot of people in. I think we're going to crack on. But before we do, I just want to mention one thing. We are running um, an art competition. It's for our 2023 calendar. And we want your art. Um, so we want images that reflect nature, culture um, and people. Uh, that are linked to the Dublin Bay Biosphere. Now, I know we've got schools from all the, over the place, um, but maybe, you know, you've visited Dublin and seen our biosphere, or maybe you just have an interest in nature and you want to share those pictures with us. Um, it'd be fantastic to receive them. And all you need to do is send uh, your image, your a, a, a copy of your pictures, your artwork, to info at dublinbaybiosphere.ie. Um, so that's great. That's from me and Ellen. I believe you're planning something. Yes, yes. So we are planning something. Um, we have a whole series of events going on. And now Nessa loves insects, but here in the Kerry Biosphere this year, we have a big focus on birds of the biosphere, uh, just like Dean does, actually, because he has a fantastic new swatch I'm sure he's going to find. And um, so we have an event this week where we're collaborating with the Kerry Eco Social Farming Project and the Clarny Men's Shed to host an event where you can come along and learn how to make bird, bat and insect boxes to support biodiversity in your garden or on your farm. So you can check our website and see details of that um, and you would be more than welcome to come along. So any of the schools in Kerry, you're probably close enough to be able to check it out and come down and see us in Killarney on Thursday evening. And you can see Dean's lovely birds of Biosphere swatch there. <laughs> Hopefully we'll do one in Kerry as well for all our upland birds. So we'll hand over to Nessa to get started for the day. Thanks again, Nessa, for putting all these together. We're really excited. And how are we exploring insects today? Thank you, busy, wonderful biosphere people. Those um, uh, projects sound absolutely amazing. I was just thinking as Dean was talking about the calendar, it would be great if we could make it a scratch and sniff calendar because today we're going to be exploring insects through the sense of smell. Um, so I'll put my slides up and we can get started. So yeah, we're going to be exploring insects and we've also been exploring other invertebrates. We don't want to leave them out just because I mainly focus on insects in my work. Doesn't mean that all the other invertebrates aren't important. They're just as important and every living thing, thing has its own essential role in life. So we will of course be including other other mini beasts today as we explore them through the sense of smell. So if you haven't been to the previous webinars, uh, my name is Nessa. I'm a creative entomologist, which means that uh, my mission is to reintroduce humans to their natural habitat through colorful encounters with insects. Um, and that means doing workshops in schools or online or taking people out on nature walks and doing insect surveys for conservation and you can see some great insect notebooks there made by Geisha National School in County Offaly um, with, for a project that I did with them. And you can see there are some really cool uh, beetles under the microscopes. That's what I get to do at home when I've done my in insect surveys. So someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, uh, how long have I been a creative entomologist? And really, if I think about it, probably my whole life, because what it basically involves is loving insects and making art. So you can start anytime. You can start now by going out and exploring insects and, uh, and making art about them. So, and a couple of weeks ago, you did get creative about insects because we did some beautiful poetry writing um, when we were discussing how to explore insects through the sense of sound, through hearing. Um, so I'm gonna read one of the poems that I put together from all the lovely lines that you sent in. And after that, um, we're going to, uh, I, I, we also, um, I learned something new from you last week, so we're going to talk about that as well. So this poem I've called Insect-Human Interactions because it's all about encountering insects in and around our homes and how we, how we react to them and how we interact with them. I heard a bee on the trampoline. It gave me a fright without being in sight. A bug then landed on my ball. It was the most beautiful bug of all. The moth on the wall has a beautiful call. I was watching TV and a wasp spoke to me. The insects buzz in the night, keeping me company when I camp out. 
One flew in my eye, so I decided to pout. I wanted to kill it, but it looked too fierce. And I thought of the insect family it loved. Back in my room, I heard the flutter of wings and the moth was eating my gloves. So thank you for sending in your lovely insect observations um, to, for us to put together for that great poem. Um, yeah, keep the, the questions coming in. I think we have a Q&A uh, box, um, which, and we can certainly, oh yeah, Dean just wrote that in the chat. Um, we can, um, sorry, I'm just seeing messages that the sound quality is poor. Is it me that's causing the issues? <laughs> it's, it sounds fine. It sounds fine for me, Nessa. So I'm wondering if that person maybe has some problems with their speakers, maybe double check okay. it. But I think it's I think it's okay. I'm hearing you fine. Yeah. I think Ian is hearing you okay as well. So okay, well do let me know if it continues. So last week I learned from you guys um, that wood lice have pouches, a bit like kangaroos, and that the their babies develop in these pouches and they keep them in the pouches until they're big enough to fend for themselves. So when I was uh, looking into this because I thought it was a fascinating fact that I hadn't heard before. Um, I found an amazing video of the miracle of woodlouse birth. So after the, the females carried fertilized eggs in the brood pouch under her body until they're big enough to survive on their own, they all pop out like in the video that I'm about to show you. Uh, where do they put it? Aren't they beautiful? Dean didn't look so sure. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think they're adorable. Um, and while I was reading about, about that, I also found out that wood lice can release an unpleasant smell by excreting ammonia through their exoskeletons. Can anyone out there tell us what an exoskeleton is? Pop your answers in the chat. I'm sure there's lots of children with their hands raised at this moment, <laughs> yeah, giving yeah, their answers to teachers who are then going to type that in. So Ooh. yeah, fantastic. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's an external skeleton, word, isn't it? <laughs> True. Their shell, their shell or their external skeleton. So in vertebrates, that means they don't have a vertebrate and they don't have other bones like we Hello, do inside their speaking. bodies. But um, David, David. Dean, you got to mute yourself. Well, you're muted. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, we had a mute issue. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, some oh. muting confusion. But we're back now. Um. So. So yeah. Um. Wood light. Wood lights can produce a stink through their exoskeleton, and I guess they might do that if they were disturbed or feeling threatened, and to try and deter predators from eating them. So remember, we had the map of the wood lice names, um, and. They, some of them are called things like chiggy pigs and sow bugs, grammar sow, wood pig. That is because, uh, because of their smell, because some people think they smell like pigs. So you can enjoy this wonderful aroma yourselves by putting some wood lice in a jar for a short period of time and then opening it up and having a sniff of the fragrant air within. Um, so enjoy that. Now, this is, um, well, yes, I wanted to ask you, how do humans smell? And I know what Dean's answer is going to be. How do humans Very smell? Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, we smell lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, oh, I don't know. I think we probably smell worse than insects sometimes. But that's not what I meant. 
<laughs> Although that joke never gets old. I meant, how does our sense of smell work? Katrina so. has said sweaty. <laughs> Sweaty, <laughs> yes. And, sure. and some, somebody else has put a little smiley face. But yeah, we, we, use our, we use our nose. We do indeed. Yeah. And inside that nose, we've got smell receptors. Um, we've got pretty advanced noses, actually, as mammals. We have more than 1,000 different kinds of smell receptors. And that allows us to smell an estimated 1 trillion different odors. So, um, yeah. Why do we smell? Why do you smell, Dean? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I know if I've been working and somebody else is doing the dinner, I could smell that from a distance. That's always <laughs> helpful. That kind of gets um, my taste buds going as well. So, I mean, yeah, if there's something tasty nearby, my, my nose starts working for sure. You missed a prime joke opportunity there. Oh, no, I wasn't going to go there correct. again because I thought it was fair. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, Alan, a lot of, there's a lot of answers coming in in the chat there about why we smell. So right. Rania says to learn about the world around me. Aideen has said to check if something's good to eat, like, just like Dean. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> concerned with food. And Fiona Keane says for survival, so it helps for our survival. We've got those funny black boxes behind the image again, Nessa. Oh, oh yeah. hmm. let me get rid of a few things. Yeah. Uh, hopefully not the wrong things. Um, are they still there? Uh, you added one there when you clicked on the compass, but yeah, uh, yeah, we do have. Anyway, right. it's not too bad. It's not, it's not in the important area. At the moment, so. I, I think if you stop sharing and then reshare and don't tick the box ah. for sharing the video, it, it's supposed to stop them. That makes supposed. sense. At least that's what. Oh, wrong one. Now, there we go. Perfect. Phew. Okay, so there's lots of reasons why things need to smell. It's to make sure that we're not going to eat anything that will make us sick, it might help us to find food, help us to find mates and friends and um, places to hide. And also, um, in, at some point in history, it might have helped us to stay away from things that might eat us. So, insects don't have noses. How do they smell? Anybody out there um, want to answer in the chat box? <laughs> Dean has just given you a clue. I can no longer see the chat box, so if either of you guys can see. Uh, yes, yeah, so anything. we have uh, Anya has said with their feet. We've got through their antennae from Gronia, feet, antennae, 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 feelers or feet and antennae. Brilliant. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's a whole bunch of different types of antennae there in this picture on the left. And we've got some very curious insects or creatures on the other side. One is a parasitoid wasp, which can smell with her ovipositor. So that long protrusion out of her back end there, that's the ovipositor. And she sticks that into a fig to try to lay an egg in a gall wasp larva that's inside the fig but she can't see, so she has to use her ovipositor to smell her way around to find the, the other larva to lay the eggs in. And then beneath that, you've got a whip spider and its two front legs are uh, adapted to look like, or to act like antennae and to be able to pick up smells. Oops. Now, this is a fungus called a stink horn and it stinks. Can you tell me why you think it might Stink, what purpose does it have? So it's, um, yeah, it attracts flies, exactly. You can even see there on, on this one, which is one that I found in Madagascar, although we do have a very similar species here in Ireland. Um, you can see that there are flies crawling around on it. And they'll pick up the spores of the fungus on their feet and take them to another fungus. And that is, um, or sorry, they'll take them to the, to the ground and to other bits of dead wood. Um, the spores are like the seeds of the fungus and that'll spread more of these stink horns around the place. Helps them to disperse. 
So um, other, um, or rather plants, uh, will smell to either attract insects to pollinate them, or some of them have odors that deter insects from eating them. So here you've got a few po um, insect pollinated plants attracting things with a nice aroma. Um, some of these more pale colored flowers will release their scent in the nighttime um, and those will attract uh, things that come out at dusk or during the night. And fun fact, flowers that are the same color often smell the same. So next time you're out in the flower garden outside your school, um, do a little nose survey and find out which ones, uh, find out if the ones that are same color smell the same. And some of them, uh, so these ones in this picture smell very pleasant. That's a wild garlic and a buddleia and a, a hummingbird moth visiting the buddleia. But other flowers will give off a kind of pungent smell, what we would consider a bad smell, but something that wasps, for instance, might find delicious. So this is a, a fig word, a common fig word on the left, and that smell attracts wasps, because wasps are also pollinators, but they're also carnivores and scavengers. So they'll be attracted to smells that are like decaying meat or other kinds of meat. And a friend of mine, his mother feeds ham to the wasps before she has a, a garden party. She'll bring, she'll get some ham, put it at the end of the garden and feed it to the wasps. And that is so that they'll, um, they'll smell, they'll sniff that out and they will go to the end of the garden, enjoy their ham and not bother um, the party guests. So here's a video of their wasps eating some fancy ham. Nessa, in the chat, somebody has suggested that um the fungus uses the smell to deter predators. I mean, do some of the plants do that? Oh. Uh, That's a good question. Oops, sorry, I've just... Uh, it is a good question, but I'm afraid it's outside my scope of knowledge. <laughs> um, Insects, not flowers. Got it, got it. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if anyone wants to look it up and share that with us next week, that would be fantastic. Um, so that's, this is a local plant that attracts wasps with a pungent smell. Does anyone know what this big red flower in the bottom right corner is and where it's from? And can you tell us any exciting facts about it? Anything coming up in the chat there? I've Over found there. out that Not some yet. plants do deter predators. Oh. And I should have known this because um, marigolds and some other plants deter aphids. Oh, that's um, true. And marigolds, if you take their leaves and make a kind of tea out of them, you can use that as a natural insecticide um, mm. to, to deter aphids from your other plants. So, top tip. All the um, gardeners um, out there using yeah. plant, plant weaponry. <laughs> using marigold leaves that have been boiled to make a tea and cooled down and then sprayed on their plants. There you go. And so, you know what? Have... I just remembered I did actually know that, but I wasn't, when you said predators, <laughs> I wasn't thinking of thinking tiny big. little aphids. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of <laughs> big things with claws. So, <laughs> yeah, so those are predators to plants, it's true. So, Grania has suggested in the chat that the plant can be found in Indonesia. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. Excellent. This is um, a, a plant called Rafflesia arnoldii, the corpse flower. And it produces the biggest single flower of any plant in the world, which can be up, up to one meter wide and uh, up to 11 kilograms in weight. And it releases this strong, unpleasant odor of decaying flesh, which is attractive to flies and beetles. And the flies and beetles visit the plant and then <clears throat> visit another flower and pollinate them in that way. So it's quite quite a cool plant. It's in the, the rainforests of Sumatra and Borneo and it parasitizes on vines. It's got like, it's just one of the most interesting plants I've ever heard of. Whoops. And of course, there are 
um, insects that smell us. So <clears throat> does, um, has anyone ever encountered a leech or a mosquito on their travels? You can actually, uh, so this, this leech here is a picture that I took in Madagascar. You can actually see the leeches galloping across the leaves, dead leaves, and galloping across the branches of the trees coming to get you. <laughs> no, it's not actually as scary as it seems. <laughs> you get used to them. It's amazing what you can get used to. But <laughs> they, um, they sniff us out uh, using the, or they sniff out the, the smell of our sweat and our breath. But they can also, they've also got receptors to feel our movement and the warmth of people nearby. And mosquitoes as well will sniff out the ammonia in our sweat or the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. And then we have insects that like to smell out poo. So we all love dung beetles. Um, when a cow does a cow pet, beetles can smell it from ages away. They smell it very, very quickly and they fly very, very quickly to get to that cow pet while it's still nice and soft for them to lay their eggs in and to burrow into. And, um, and uh, there will also be things like this uh, dung fly on the left that feed on insects that eat dung. So they'll also come running to, uh, to take advantage of the influx of other insects. So the one, the dung beetle on the top there, that's from Madagascar, one of the ones that roll, roll up balls. And these ones at the bottom are dung beetles that we find in Ireland. Um, so they have an incredibly sensitive sense of smell, um, which is obviously really helpful for noticing when there's dung to be had and getting there. But I can't imagine what it must be like to be burrowing into a pile of dung with that sensitive a nose. So neither do I want to. So part of my work involves doing surveys of insects. And some of that involves chasing butterflies around with a net so that I can catch them, identify them, record what they are, and then let them free again. But there are certain types of butterflies that are harder to catch than others. And for me, those are the, the white butterflies the large white, small white, green veined white. The way they fly is very erratic. They deliberately to confuse predators. And so you'll be like running back and forth trying to catch one and suddenly it'll just zip off into the sky. Um, so I was very frustrated about this and I asked an expert, a butterfly expert in the Dublin Naturalist Field Club, what can I do to make it easier to catch these white butterflies? And he said very seriously, eat a banana, um, which surprised me and I also thought was a joke. Ah, Dean is well prepared. I too came prepared for butterfly catching today. And the reason I think that this is a handy trick for catching these white butterflies is that the smell of the banana is similar to the smell of the pheromones they use to attract a mate. So, now you know. And what is a pheromone? Now, I'm very interested to hear what, um, what you know about pheromones in insects and other animals. Send us in your answers there and see if you can tell us what they are. I keep losing the chat box. Oh, there it is. Has anyone heard the word pheromone before? Can you guess what it might be? Whilst the questions and whilst the answers are coming in, um, we've got some answers to um, plants deterring animals. <clears throat> so sage uh, is very good at deterring a, a range of animals. Daffodils, um, and actually can be quite poisonous to things like deer, rodents, squirrels. Oh. Onions seem to um, frighten off a lot of animals, rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, deer, um, people who cut them with a knife makes them cry. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's lots and lots of plants that actually um, <clears throat> are good at keeping animals away that might want to eat. Wow, them. they're a lot more active than you'd imagine. 
You don't just sit have, there and let things eat them. <laughs> we have lots of suggestions coming in in the chat now. So we have um, a chemical smell, a smell, an attractive smell to attract a mate, uh, a smell, uh, a plant, a smell to attract a mate, or a smell to uh, help attract others. A bit like animal perfume is one description. Mm. Um, and then pheromones are hormones in sweat, is what Katrina has said. So there's all the answers so far. Really nice information. That's brilliant. So those those are all, um, oh yeah, insects way of talking. So those are um, oh, certainly all part of it. Um, pheromones are a chemical substance secreted by an insect or an other animal as a means of communication to change the behavior of another insect or animal of the same species. So that might be, as you were saying, to attract a mate or to attract others, like um, locusts uh, would release one to get all the locusts to gather together to become gregarious so that they might um, uh, devour a crop together or, um, or a smell to warn the other insects. So you might have like alarm smells to tell the other insects that there's a threat um, or to encourage cleaning behavior. So we'll hear a little bit more about that in relation to bees in a moment. Ah, there they are. So bumblebees have smelly feet, um, just like us, except they use their smelly feet uh, for a very important function. And that is to leave a little mark on a flower to tell another bee that they've been there. They've got the nectar and pollen, so that flower is, is done and they can go to a different one and the bees can tell the smell of the feet of other bees from the same hive from different hives and they can also they also each have an individual foot smell and wasps and ants can do the same as well ants can leave trails to to tell the other ants where to go to get food um, and they're actually all related wasps bees ants and they're all in the order hymenoptera so apparently the alarm pheromone of a bee, of a honeybee also smells like bananas. Um, and an agitated bee will give off this smell to uh, attract the other bees to ward off whatever threat it is that's attacking it. Um, and the queen will also release pheromones to attract a mate and also to, um, to get the other bees, the worker bees to look after her, to clean her and to bring her food. So this is a garlic snail. As you can imagine, it smells of garlic. Um, I per personally, that makes it sound delicious to me. But as you were saying, there are other things that are uh, not attracted to onions and garlic and things like that. So maybe it has a useful um, way of deterring predators. Um, you wouldn't get. Uh, we were talking about eating snails last week. You probably wouldn't get much out of these tiny little garlic snails, but perhaps they're delicious. And here we have a green shield bug. Does anyone out there know uh, a different name for shield bugs? What, what are they sometimes called? The clue is in the topic of today's webinar. Stink bugs, you've got it. Yes, they are sometimes known as stink bugs. And this is where your, um, your resources are going to come in handy. So if your teachers had a chance to, to read the teacher's resource and, uh, and get a couple of things that we need for today's webinar. Um, teachers, you can take the, the green leafy item that I asked you to get. Don't tell them what it is yet. Um, and if everyone in the class can close their eyes, you can take some of this green leafy substance, scrunch it up and get each of your uh, pupils to, to have a sniff of it. And when you've smelt it, you can, um, you can let us know in the chat box what, do you, what you think it smells like and whether you think it smells good or bad. Because what you're about to smell is what the green shield bug is said to smell like when it releases um, a smell to deter predators. So some, some people say they can actually taste this substance on blackberries that the shield bugs have been walking on. Um, 
And if you are one of, well, when you smell this, uh, the thing that your teacher is going to tell you to smell, um, you might find that you think it smells amazing. I think it smells amazing, but some people find the smell and the taste of this particular thing really horrible. And that's because about 20% of the human population has a gene that makes this thing taste really bad to them. So that's a clue. If you haven't, um, if you haven't got a chance to smell it yet, you might even be able to guess what it is from that. Um, so I'm going to leave, let you do that for a moment and I'll wait to see if any answers come in. And in the meantime, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the white-legged snake millipede. So this is a, a myriapod that lives under rocks and rotting wood in gardens and woodlands and it eats a uh, dead decaying plant matter, dead leaves and things, and mildew. So it has a really important role to play in the nutrient cycling in the ecosystem. And the, uh, you can also tell me, what does the name millipede mean? Or maybe Eleanor or Dean would know what the name millipede means. Okay, so we're getting some results in on what the, what the smell is like. We're split on whether it's nice or not here. So you must have some people in your, in your class who have the gene and some who don't, uh, that gene that makes it smell really bad. Now, people are saying that um, millipede means a thousand feet and you're absolutely correct. Sadly, millipedes don't have a thousand feet. This one has about a hundred legs, but that's still probably plenty. So I don't know, I don't want to ask you too many questions all at the same time, but does anyone else have any, have any views on how their uh, smell experiment is going? Um, well then, in the meantime as well, I would also love to know, aha, someone's figured out what it is. Should I give away the answer? Yeah. It is, in fact, coriander. So my coriander is looking a bit sad here. Um, don't know, it kind of wilted, but uh, I think coriander is delicious. Um, but apparently things in, in the hedgerow are deterred by this delicious smell, uh, which to some people smells like uh, soap, burnt tires, oil, ammonia, or like a skunk. So, um, mm, so good. <laughs> so, um, some people thought it was horrible, others found it okay, coriander. So now we know who's going to be friends of the shield bugs and who is going to run away when they start to spread their stink. It reminds so, me of that Marmite thing, you know, some people like the taste of Marmite, some don't. So it's um, very similar to that. True. So shield bugs are like Marmite. Hmm, that's almost poetry, Dean. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've lost my notes. Oh, there they are. Excellent. So now you know what a shield bug smells like when it's cross. Um, the white-legged snake millipede also has a very distinctive smell when it's under threat. So it's able, of course, to curl itself up and put its hard exoskeleton on the outside so that it, it already has a defense. But if it gets really bothered, it produces a smell that is like TCP antiseptic. So in a, in a while, we're going to use that. Um, I think some of you all also have that in your classrooms. Um, if you had a chance to look at the resources, and we're going to use that for a little exercise later on as well. So is there somebody else uh, that actually likes or at least uses the smell of millipedes? to um, protect themselves from parasites. And uh, does anyone know what animal this is? The clue is in the country that I keep mentioning that I worked in before. <laughs> is it is it a, Ma a Madagascar monkey? <laughs> it's certainly from Madagascar. 
and it is related to monkeys. It's a lemur, you're right. Um, it is, uh, I think this one is the red fronted brown lemur, if I am correct. And it uses uh, millipedes, such as this big red one, as a, a way to protect itself from parasites. So it'll actually chew up the millipede until the millipede gets really upset and releases all its um, stinky juices. And then it'll rub those onto its body to protect it from mosquitoes and tapeworms and all kinds of nasty things. Um, and it's, it's supposed to make them go a little bit funny in the head as well. <laughs> so, um, uh, so here's a, one of these is a millipede and one is a centipede. And I'm wondering if you guys know how to tell the difference, which is which, and how do you know? The answers are coming in slower today. You must be very sleepy. Is it the nice warm weather? <laughs> I think the questions might be a little bit more tricky. And <laughs> Maybe. I... When, yeah, when, we we were kids, when we were kids, we were always told that a millipede had a thousand legs and a centipede only had a hundred legs. And that's how you told the difference. But I don't oh, think that's true. <laughs> it's not true. It's true. Mila well, yeah, in it's... Irish is a thousand. Is that not right? Is that not right? true Mila is yeah. a thousand in Irish yeah. so it would make you think that it did have a thousand legs but that does seem like an awful lot it does well uh, people are getting the answers right the millipede is on the left and the centipede is on the right and it is to do with the legs so the millipedes have two pairs of legs on every yeah on every segment and, and we've got somebody answering here that the centipede has only one pair of legs per section. Well done. So yeah, you're right. Maybe I got a bit carried away <laughs> this week delving into information and the questions are getting harder. Well, you guys are learning more. So you, you know, you're pros at this by now. So here we have a selection of smelly insects and we're going to do a little drawing exercise. Um, I, um, you're going to make a scratch and sniff picture of one of these, one or more of these smelly insects. So I want you to pick, <clears throat> excuse me, pick one of these lovely creatures to start off with. And I'm going to demonstrate how to draw the shield bug and the millipede, because those are the smells that I've told you to bring to class today. Um, and but if you want to draw one of the others, that's fine. Then you can go and apply the smell when you get home or, or if you want to bring in more, more smells to class the next day. So I will, I'll just close this for a moment while I show you how to draw them. But then I'll pop it back up um, afterwards so you can look at the other insects. And also you'll see at the bottom there we have um, details for sending in your pictures as you complete them, because we would love to see what you're doing as well. And we can imagine the smells through the screen. So I'll start off with the shield bug. And I'm drawing inspiration from this lovely swatch from the National Biodiversity, Biodiversity Data Center, which has all the shield bugs in Ireland in it. And I'm going to do a green shield bug Now, green shield bugs are generally mostly green and brown. So I'll start with a brown outline, but you can actually do any color you like. This is your, this is your own personal shield bug. So we we'll start, because they're shield shaped, I'm gonna start with just the bottom part of the shield. Now it's gonna be a bit wonky because I'm drawing sideways, but you'll have to excuse that. Then we have, the, so that's the abdomen. Remember we were talking about those before? And this is the thorax. It's very wonky, but you get the general idea. Plus when, when, you, have, when you apply the smell, you'll be certain of what kind of insect this is. And here is its little head two little eyes. Now they have 
four long sections to their antennae. So they have two little kind of bumps here that the antennae come out of. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if I might be going a little bit fast, but you can always look at this video again because it'll be up on the Biosphere YouTube pages. Um, don't worry if you're making mistakes as you go along. When I'm doing art classes, I usually ban erasers from the class. So I don't believe there's such a thing as a mistake in art. It's all just about learning and processing and communicating. So throw your erasers aside and keep going no matter what your shield bug, shield bug, drawing, shield bug drawing is looking like. So I must say Dean and Eleanor are doing a fantastic job. Lovely. So then we have um, the front legs. Very simple little zigzag. Out, in, out. Out, in, out. It's hard to do it backwards. And again, with the because how many legs does an insect have? Six. Yes, that's right. So we're going to do the four back legs as well. Out, in, out. Out, in, out. Oops, that was a little bit longer than the other. That's okay. And then out, in, out. Out, in, out. And if you want, you can fatten those legs up a little bit. So it's coming along nicely. Now, there's an important feature on the back of a shield bug, which is helpful for distinguishing it from a beetle. Beetles always have a straight line down the, um, the middle of their back, and that's the, that's the line between their two wing cases. Um, so with true bugs, which is what a shield bug is, it's a bit different. You have kind of a, a triangle, the kind of narrows at the at this end, narrows and curves at this end. <laughs> it's a super wonky shield bug. And then two lines coming down like this. So that's because the, the wing cases of a shield bug are only half hardened. So they change color at the end here. So that is, I think, why they're called hemiptera, which means half winged. I meant to check that before we started this webinar, but I'm fairly sure that that's what that means. <laughs> um, so now you've got your basic shield bug shape. Now this is a green shield bug, and luckily coriander is green because it's full of chlorophyll, which is what plants use to make their food, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to take a little piece of coriander and I'm going to enjoy the smell and then I'm going to start colouring in my shield bug using the coriander. Now unless you're growing your own coriander it's a little bit pricey so I would imagine that our school budgets don't stretch to having enough coriander for every child to paint their entire shield bug with coriander. What I suggest you do is go out in the playground at break, find some more green plants to colour in the rest of your shield bug and with green shield bugs, most of it is green. And you've got a little um, little brown patch at the end with the, the crossed over wings. So there you go, there's our green shield bug, smelling absolutely pungent. And now I'm going to show you how to do the millipede. Oh, these are fantastic. Yes, you can, of course, use uh, coloring pencils as well. You don't have to use plants. Um, coloring pencils and markers are just as valid. Um, and I see, see a couple of people are having to go for their breaks, um, but I want to thank you for joining in and hope you'll be able to catch up on this drawing part of the video later on. Um, I'll start now with the millipede. So, this millipede, millipede is very, very easy to sh easy shape to draw actually, thankfully. You can do it in any kind of 
formation. So you can do one that's busy walking along the forest floor, or you could do one that's curled up in a defensive ball, which might be the most appropriate if we're gonna be making it smell of its defense aroma. And then you're gonna do all of its many, many, many little legs. And when you see a, a millipede walking across the forest floor, it's like it's moving its legs like a little curtain. So here you go, lots and lots and lots and lots of legs. And they've got segments as well, don't they? So just little stripes all the way along the body. Now this is a very rough sketch. You'll have more time to spend on these drawings yourselves in class. But this will give you the general idea. And once you've got your outline drawn, um, you can either color it in uh, as it looks naturally. This species is, is black from, is, uh, the entire body is black. Um, and what you might do if you want to draw it in its natural colors is leave little white lines in between each section in between each section, so you can see the, the division between. Like that. Or, today I'm gonna to do mine as a multicolored centipede, because I can, that's totally fine. Now I didn't manage to get TCP, but I have, uh, just an antibacterial cleaning spray instead, which I'm hoping will produce some nice painterly effects on my millipede drawing. That should do for now. Maybe a little orange. So here we have our multicolored millipede. And let's see what happens if I spray it. Hmm. So I worked a little better earlier when I did the, <coughs> the water-based coloring pencils. You can see here, uh, it kind of made the watering base coloring pencil smudge. So it looks like it's exuding the liquid that makes the terrible smell to scare off predators. So yeah, get, get creative with, um, with the materials that you use and, um, and try out those other insects as well. I'll put up the other insects now so you can, if you wanted to draw the other ones, you can do so. And maybe if any of you are completing your drawings right now, you might send them in to us and we can, we can put some up on the screen or else we can put them up next week, whichever is handy for Eleanor. Because Eleanor seems to be deep in the creative process right now. Very impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very creative with my millipede here. We have <laughs> received one drawing by email. Um, so if you have your photos, do send them in. You can WhatsApp them or email them and I'll try and pull a few together. Fabulous. I'll show you, show you mine. It's, this is Sid, the centipede, but he's not playing ball at the moment, he's hiding. Oh, he's lovely. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I must say the spray that I use doesn't smell anything like a millipede, but maybe I'll get some TCP and try again later. Looking forward to drawing a banana flavored bee as well. So how, is there, how are people doing with their drawings out there? Will I leave these pictures up or do you wanna hear a little bit about some uh, fragrant plants that you can use to make food with? That'd be very interesting. And um, we still have a little bit of time for maybe a, a couple of questions. So if anyone has any questions that they want to ask us, we can, we can do that as well. Yes, please do send in questions because I've just been waffling on about what interests me for this whole session. Um, and I'd love to know what you uh, found interesting and what, you, what else you'd like to learn about insects, especially perhaps in preparation for our next and final um, 
sense webinar which will be next week and is about exploring insects through the sense of touch so if anyone has any ideas for that i'd also love to hear that I'm definitely wondering how that workshop's going to go. Um, I imagine insects feel very different. Different types of insects feel very different. I mean, we've got some here on the screen that I imagine if I was, uh, if I wanted to rub my fingers across them, they'd feel all very different. Hmm. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> some of them might react very differently as ah, well. That's true. <laughs> What is the name insect. of the green insect again, please? The one in the top right is the shield bug or stink bug, is that right, Essa? Yeah, it's a green shield bug. Green shield. Now, the impression I get is they're not as stinky in Ireland as they as some of the shield bug species are perhaps in like North America. Um, so they don't get called stink bugs as often here. But, um, but yeah, that's what they are. Shield bugs or stink bugs. Um, and I've see, I see a question there, why are snail shells different colours? That is a really good question to which I don't know the answer. So I'm going to look into that for next week because that would be perfect for next week's webinar when we will be talking about snails. So I'm, I'm going to show you um, just two, two last little things. I'm uh, just writing that down so I remember for next week. Um, and thanks for all the thanks that are coming in. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. These are, this is pineapple weed. There's a lot of it around at the moment, just in cracks in the pavement and on waste ground. Um, if you pinch one of these flowers, it will smell like pineapple. And you can make amazing cookies out of them with the, the recipe at the website at the bottom of this uh, slide. I really recommend those. They're absolutely delicious. And um, also, elderflower is out at the moment, which is really, really, um, has a really delicious smell. And I currently have some in some uh, saucepans of water and sugar and lemon juice downstairs getting ready to make elderflower fizz, which is like an elderflower flavoured fizzy drink. So it's, um, it's great that plants send out these lovely smells. Um, to attract the insects because we can also make use of them ourselves for, to make delicious things. Oh, I'm getting lots of thanks from everyone. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And I'll um, hopefully see all of you who are, who are leaving now at next week's webinar. So that's it really, unless anyone has any further questions. Well, Nessa, there's no questions come through. Well but... and you might send some in to us so we can show yeah. them next week. Absolutely, yeah. If you have any questions, you can definitely email us and we'll find out the answers and get back to you next week. But I think uh -oh. they're all put Everyone's off a little bit frozen. by the uh, hard oh, questions that you've been asking them, Nessa. Um, you know, we, uh, there's definitely been some really good questions and um, delighted to say that uh, between all these skills that they've managed to come up with the right answers every time, which is fantastic. So there's definitely more knowledgeable young people out there, thanks to these workshops. So I suppose I have one question for you, Ness, before we go. If, um, if a school wants to get in contact with you, want you to come and visit them, how is the easiest way of doing it? I mean, you mentioned about the Heritage Programme, but is there a website or is there an email address that they can go to? How do they, work? How do, they do that? Yes, um, I think it's heritageinschools.ie. Okay. Um, or you can you can email me at info at nessadarcy.ie. So I'll put that in the chat. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so I can I can do school visits in the kind of greater Dublin area, but I also do um, like not one to one, but one one me to one class um, <laughs> online. <laughs> Excuse me, online videos, um, online Zoom calls. Yeah. So, and I also have a, a online tutorial about exploring hedgerows, all the and all the moths and other insects that live in hedgerows. Exciting! So, so that could be a really good adventure for the summer for. A, for a school or a class absolutely maybe, to yeah to learn that. um okay we've got a question in um and it's from miss o'doherty and it's how do insects send out their 
pheromones? How do they do oh, that? That's a very good question. So they have glands on their bodies that produce them. And I think they just like, um, I know when you have, um, you know, when ladybirds release that kind of yellow liquid that deters predators, I imagine that a lot of them do it just like that. Some of them can actually like squirt it out. Um, and I would say they probably use their, their wings and things to kind of send this, send, waft the smell a little further as well. But it's just produced from different glands on their body. Fantastic, interesting stuff. Yeah. Someone has also asked me, what is my favorite bug? And I must say that kind of, it's hard to choose and it changes from time to time, but uh, an old reliable is the green tiger beetle. That's definitely one of my favorites. I'm going to have to go with ladybird. Oh, which one though? Oh, all of them. Okay, good answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no favorites, otherwise they, you know. Yeah, like it's you. true. We can really have favorites because they're all just as important. They're all amazing. So okay. I actually have um, just got a lot of images together. So if you don't mind, Nessa, I'm going to steal Great. the screen Fantastic. share. Can everyone yeah. I've been, sorry, I've been quiet because I've been frantically trying to help them <laughs> paste them. Um, so cool, I look at that. Fabulous. Some of these. And I'm sure there is more coming into the WhatsApp and the email at the moment, but this is what I've pulled together. So oh, far. wow, cool. This is adorable. Hey, I love that's it. very bright and colourful. <laughs> centipede there. Look at these great mm, ones here. Can smell those. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried about those. <laughs> they, might, they look you very Yeah, they might smell. <laughs> this guy looks brilliant, doesn't he? Oh, that's so good. Lovely texture. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Well, he looks I like he's really stick. exuding yeah. a lot of. Um... That's Imogen. Imogen, what a great image. Fabulous. Oh, That's very nice. nice. Look at those zigzaggy exactly legs. I love it. I'm boss. <laughs> Uh, he, well, he's a stinky boss. Whoever that is. Yeah. Yeah. Stink yeah. boss. Yes, <laughs> that's what we should call him. Oh, these are so cool. Wow. I think that's it. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Emily. Well done, everyone. Loads coming in. So thank you so much for sending them in. Um, and, uh, Ellen, if it's not too much trouble, if you could send them to me, I'd love to put them on our, our website. So I'd love to get them as well. Share yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> be good to recognize all those all their efforts and if we know where they came from even better but fantastic thank you so much everybody so i, I think um four out of five sessions are done now but we still have the touchy feely session to come and i'm really really looking forward to that next week um and if it's anywhere near as good as the others it's going to be brilliant so um thank you nessa thank you thanks nessa thanks dean and we we'll hope to see everyone next week. Yeah. Excellent. Have a good week. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye 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 bye. bye. bye.